welcome back. Well, go ahead, Jazz. Go ahead. Hey, everybody. Episode 12. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there got it some, is. We've got we sound, got sound effects. effects. Give me an air horn. <laughs> Random air horn. Yes. So we got sound effects. We're super happy about that. But uh, And we also have a very special guest star. So I am really excited to introduce him. But first and foremost, we're going to start off how we start off every single episode with gratitude. I want to know what you are thankful for today, this week. What's been on your mind? I'm grateful for uh, cooperation. Um, everybody playing their part, everybody doing what needs to be you know, done on their part for the uh, bigger picture to come together. Round of applause for that. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There we go. We're just grateful for everybody doing the thing. You know, that's that's it. I'm gonna just leave it at that. I'll cut it short on that. Go ahead. All right, cool, cool. Rather than put the uh, guest star on the spot, I'll go ahead and go next. <laughs> um, so I am really grateful and thankful for this moment right now because it's just kind of like you know a dream is manifesting, and I'm I'm a witness to oh this. My gosh, you she's know what I'm saying? It's not even that deep right now. I mean, it is, <laughs> but it ain't. Like I'm not gonna cry. Like no, no, it's not like that. But I'm just super grateful. Everything came together, even despite. Um, I don't know, the sketchy GPS at Google Maps from Apple, whatever. Oh, you know, shit. I put it in my phone and we got straight here. She really so, tried to do it. Anyhow. <laughs> um, but I'm just super grateful that everything worked out. You know, everything worked out. I got my camera girl here. Shout out Shelly. Uh, she's doing her thing right there. Yep. <laughs> and I'm going to I'm gonna turn it over. I mean, this is going to be a, a gratitude slash introduction. So I have the... Okay, let me be appropriate. The <laughs> no, don't King King Noir the Great will say uh, as a guest. So I'm so happy that you can make it. So happy everything. So happy that you're here. First guest I'm ever. Can we get hand claps? <laughs> <laughs> they should never give yeah. niggas sound effects. <laughs> it's over. Should have never gave niggas sound effects. Go but ahead. before we get too far into your intro, what are you grateful for? Like at this moment, yeah, I'm really grateful for our supporters, yeah. like the people that are. Have been supporting our films, supporting our events, just supporting the movement because that's what got me in this room with y'all. Right. Definitely. True that. True Definitely. that. Cool. Okay. Well, you know, people may or may not know. So for my viewers that don't know who you are, what you do, you want to give yourself a brief introduction, a little background, you know? I'm Brent. I, uh, my name is King Noir. I'm one half of Royal Fetish Films, Jet Set and Jasmine LLC. I'm a master fetish trainer, erotic touch masseur. I fuck on film, <laughs> win, win awards for it and shit, you know? I like those claps. Win awards for it. <laughs> you talk about and win awards for it. Like, I just don't do it. I do it and right, I'm good right. at it, right? The, and, uh, you know, besides that, family man, father. How many? Three. Okay. okay. What are the and ages? 18, 14, and eight months. Okay, no. that's a nice range. Yeah, it's across the board. It's like one of those, oh, yeah, they about to graduate. Let's go through this shit again. <laughs> right, right. Almost made it. Right? <laughs> nah, I mean, um, you know, and besides that, I also do activist work and music. Hey, I'm on yeah, some Renaissance man shit. Yeah, that's you know what I'm saying. It's a lot going on. Like somebody was like, you know, but what is? I'm like, I don't know. I've got this Instagram. It's like master fetish trainer, adult entertainer. Like I don't. This is who he is. He does. He's like, you know, kind of has a lot of hats that he wears. To me, I look at life as art. So as many ways as you can find to express yourself, do that shit. That's definitely dope. That's definitely dope. Okay, so like a like a quick quick background. How did you get into this? Where you know what? How did it all start? What it made you choose this path? Like what was the first thing? First, when I was 17, my mom's kicked me out the house because I was wilding out. Okay. <laughs> so by the Believe time I turned 18, I was, you know, like, you know, hustling and bustling however I could. And my homegirl, she was dancing in Philly, and someone approached her to be in a magazine, to, you know, like porn magazine or whatever. And she was like, I don't want any random dick in my face. <laughs> so me and her was fucking around, and she was like, yo, I know you need money. <laughs> and I know you about this shit. Right. Because <laughs> I've been a freak for years. You know, like, even before I knew what fetishes were, right. I kind of had a bunch of them. So it's like, right. since I've been doing the work, I'm like, oh, wow. Like, I could look back and be like, oh, that's where that started at for me and why I was even comfortable with it. So she kind of put you on into what you got into. She put me on into how, how to get money doing right. it. You okay. know what I'm saying? Right, so right. I did, uh, from there, was in a magazine. I was like, oh, shit. Like, I can make money in, in this way 
without having to worry about like police or, or you know, it was just like one of those things was like, oh, okay, this is a, this is a real good. And it's not a bad you know? profession it either. Nah, it's nah. not. <laughs> I mean, I, I like women, and and I'm I've been an exhibitionist for a long time, so I was like, oh, I like it when people watch. That shit turns me on. Right. right. So it was like, yo, this was good work. Nah, I'll get paid for it. Yeah, exactly. So sense. you know, from there, I started doing BDSM work. Uh, cuckolding, fetish, and like live sex shows throughout New York and New Jersey. Okay. Is that like really a thing that goes on all the time? Depending on where you are, I'm I'm pretty sure everywhere. You know, like there's right. there's definitely sex is one of those things that you know everybody has sexual urges in some shape, form, or fashion, unless you're asexual, right? Mm-hmm. So people are gonna find them in whatever pocket. So like even I'm sure True. in them little small towns where you know, it might not be in the open like New York or L.A. or Miami, right, but, but it's, going, it's there it's, somewhere. It's right. Down, right. And it's probably even wild in spots like that because it's so it's Hell so yeah, like, the we map. do this shit once a year. We getting it in. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You are now tuned into the Jazzy World Podcast. It's your boy Reed, a.k.a. The Cloudiest. You can check us out on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Make sure you rate, follow, comment, and like. Search at Session Convo on all those platforms. Check in with us every week. You know, Jazz is going to be coming with the crazy stories. You know, she's got the wild topics. You know, we like to do our thing. We're going to be in here getting lit. So check in with us, all right? Make sure you check in with us. All right. Get at us. Easy. Yeah, out in Vegas, they have a, a freaking fetish fantasy ball. Mm-hmm. Ever heard of that? Mm-hmm. So one year for ha- our Halloween trip, me and my friends, it's a group of friends, just all ages, genders, colors, all this kind of stuff, you know, uh, we all go together and we're just like, everyone's sitting there in awe. Like we didn't know what to expect. We went, but they had different rooms set up and like different things were going on in each room. And it was just kind of crazy. Like there was like a, it was like a, um, hold this real quick. So it was like a stage, and on the stage it was like, you know, people kind of in the, in the inside just mm-hmm. basically like being pleasured. Like, you know, and it was just, everybody was just kind of watching, and then we went to a different room, and the girl was on the thing in the splits with the, yeah. oh. the, the circle and the strings, and I was just like, okay, all righty. So I can't say that I was surprised when I went to your show. I kind of want to segue into that, the okay. show, you know, that you yeah, did yeah. yesterday. I definitely have a lot of more questions, not a lot of, but a lot more questions, but I really want to get into that. Sure. So I want your, because I know you said that was your first show, right? Well, that was our first show in that format. Okay. Because, like, we do we do live sex shows, but this was our first time screening one of our films for an audience, okay. which is which is a lot different because, you know, when you have a group of people and they watching you just fuck you like in that moment you fucking right, you know. But like throwing it up on introducing your film. <laughs> And people are going to watch that shit. Like, it's funny because, you know, as an artist, you're like, damn, man, I could have edited this differently <laughs> right. or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's it's just different kind of vibe because if you're there as a performer, you're in your performance. Right. You're right. In but I'm there watching it with y'all like, right. oh, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So just also like even the production or getting it together because I kind of want your your view as, you know, who put it on. And I know you said it was kind of like different, but similar to what you guys do. And then I'm going to give my view as somebody coming in. Well, we did this in conjunction with Meow University right. here it's, in Have Chicago. you worked with them before? We had worked with them once before, yeah. Oh, okay. So it was something that Meow University was like, we want to have y'all come and screen one of your films. Oh. And then the earlier, well, it was like three events that we did. During the day, we, we went uh, to a community center and spoke about sex positive parenting. So okay. talking to parents about how to raise their kids without shame, okay. how to raise their kids in a sex positive way, so raise them safe, so kids know what to look out for in regards to sexual predators. Right. And then for couples, how to <laughs> continue to have healthy sex lives when you got kids. Okay. You okay. know, so we've been traveling, touring the country, me and my partner, Jet Setting Jasmine, speaking about this all over so they wanted to do that it's like the community part then at night was you know the adult because <laughs> see, that's the adult part. Cause see I'm, 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 I'm hearing you talk about these things and, and me just being a novice to everything that takes place in, in the community it's like damn you guys do have positive things that you do and outreach that you do it's just not about sex and the fetish and porn. Shit. right Absolutely. you know what i'm saying well, i come i come from an activist background okay you know my my mother was a health advocate health activist in jersey she okay. helped put together programs in the black and brown community about around health whether it be in uh 
she did the Healthy Heart in Patterson. She did um, the Asthma Project in Washington Heights. Like she's always she worked at the Betty Shabazz Clinic in Brooklyn. Okay, you know and she's always raised me. No matter what it is that you do, you got to do it for your people. Right. Somehow and you got to figure that out. Right. Right. You know and within our community, there are black folk. We are and brown folk. We are oppressed. So then on top of that, we repress ourselves in regards to sex. Very true. And a lot of times we are the fetish instead of being able to engage in the fetish because mm. our bodies have been used as as a tool basically right. here in this country for so long. So, you know, all the things that revolve around sex, whether it be from the church or our neighborhood or all these things are all these things are always like weighing upon us. So it's kind of like how to break out of that. Right. Right. How to know how to protect yourself. You know, sometimes in our in our community it's not the it's not the talk that we have with our kids. Right. It's like, don't have sex. And, and, then, that's, and, that's and then the it. next time right. you're talking is, you know, when you have a baby someone in your, in your family, right. like a teen, teen pregnancy or something right, like right, that. Right, then, right. You know, so it's like, how do we work, how do we work through this to be just better within ourselves, better within our yeah. community? And it's like, that's what an activist is. Right. I know uh, one of my friends, a close friend actually said that she had gotten pregnant and um, her mom was like that. And she was like, you know, no, don't talk about it. You know, she got actually got in trouble for trying to buy condoms. Mm. And um, the mom said later on, like, you know, but and then she ended up getting pregnant, you know, and I believe it was the first time that she even had sex boom gets pregnant mm. after trying to buy condoms and her mom was always felt guilty after that like you were trying to do the right thing and i basically interfered with that you were going to do it anyways and boom now you had a, a baby like not in an ideal time basically you know yeah so that is definitely something in the community that people it's like a stigma or whatever and it, it happens so yeah and we also see within our community right now there are so many topics just around sex and sexuality that are directly affecting us, whether it be, you know, from teen pregnancy to STDs to, you know, uh, attacks on LGBTQ folk in our community. And how are we going to strengthen that? How are we going to strengthen our community to accept one another, to work through these things together right. so that everybody can be ourselves because, you know, on top of that, we got the stuff that's outside of our community. Right. That that's going to always come down on that us. That you still got to deal so with. So we got to be as the inside the community. Exactly. We got to be able to deal with ourselves and we got to be able to love ourselves. Absolutely. That's cool. So we're going to get back on to uh, my point of view from the show. Okay. Just because I kind of want to give the, the listeners an accurate depiction like what was going on All right. kind of like my whole journey with it so um of course i reached out to you you know we reached, we reached out to each other whatever about the podcast and i knew you had the show in chicago so i was like oh well this is kind of perfect and then reed already his brother oh, was celebrated his first 45th birthday yeah shout so. out jamal shabazz reasonable ignorant podcast he had a birthday <laughs> party it was lit Old black people being old black people. You can just imagine. It was a good time. It was a good time. So everything <laughs> just kind of lined up for me to like be out here and, and you know get, get this interview with you. So I get the email and it's kind of like, you know, a private location, undisclosed. It was just a lot of private things around the email. <laughs> a lot of and, private things. Uh, but, <laughs> right, no pun. Uh, and then it was like, you know, well, it's going to be a screening of a movie. And I mean, I guess I could have gathered that it was going to be, you know, a full-length porn, basically. But I didn't really think about it like that. I thought, okay, maybe they're doing their fetish shit on camera. Yeah. He got the whips or something. I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, we get there. I walk in. I kind of sit off to the side because I'm like... You can, you can move into the crowd, but you can't move out of the crowd. Like once you choose to <laughs> right, sit with the crowd, right, right. like that's it. Like you can't yeah. then move away from the crowd if something weird is going on. So I'm like, I sit away or whatever. And then we start doing pornioki, which I know we talked about that. But do you want to explain to the listeners like what that is and how y'all came up with that? So pornioki, um, our, our friend Marla Stewart, she does uh, Sex Down South in Atlanta. She hits us up like, yo, we need some porn. We're going <laughs> to we're gonna do this thing, pornioki. So we brought our films and basically play parts of the films on mute, hand people a microphone, and they just kind of do thought bubbles or oh, what they think the people are saying, make, make their own sound effects. Yeah. Oh, that's dope. And that shit is completely hilarious. Oh, that's it, dope. It really was. It was a good time. It wasn't, honestly, even though it was obviously, you know, on the screen, a, a scene, you know, from a, a porn, porn 
pornography. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Pornographic They were film. having sex on this big screen. You know, <laughs> <laughs> there was sex being had. I don't know how else to say it. Um, but it wasn't sexual when we were doing the pornioki at all. It was just funny because everybody went up there. The first two people were, they probably just wanted to die. They were like, oh my God, I did not know this was going on tonight. I'm kind of upset I missed this. That's probably <laughs> what I would have been up there for. <laughs> Dude, like, I don't know. Well, you knew the girl in the blue. I don't know if that was her dude or whatever, but he went up there. So I'm not sure if he was like hesitant on what he could say because he went up there with another girl to do this pornioki part. Oh, so he was, mm. you know. Oh, no, so. we, we didn't know her. Oh, really? Nah. Oh, okay. All righty. Well, <laughs> well, who knows their situation? Know they, they just both kind of <laughs> were the first people to raise their hands to do it. So. Right. Okay. Okay. And then there was a second one. It was funny because the scene, it was a scene we got, it's called The Range Doctors, and it's basically like some cosplay shit. We, doctors or whatever and I got like a speculum so I'm like opening up a <laughs> pussy with a speculum oh. and like fingering her and stuff and you know like that's to just start from there was <laughs> hilarious oh, he was like, like oh you got you got one of you got one of those things like, that show is mad funny yo cause he, it just threw them off from the beginning which is good cause then it's it, mel- it makes people warm up, you know exactly. what I'm saying? Like, they get, they get comfortable together. after that. It's an icebreaker you know, for sure. It, it definitely, definitely was a great icebreaker. Then I went up there. You did. How do you think I did? You look nervous. <laughs> nah. It was new, you it know. Was it was funny, though. Like, it was funny. I was like, well, all righty. And then I had to play Jasmine, so I was like, okay. now." Jasmine and she was like Jasmine. right there, right next to me as so I'm doing this. So I'm like, <laughs> no pressure, but I got to do a great job. <laughs> was that, that your first time role playing with a, with a strap on? Yeah, you see, that was new to me. That was completely new. I don't even, I don't, I've never <laughs> even seen that like in a porn. Like, you know, like I don't watch that kind of you stuff. You've never seen a strap on in a porn? Not, I what mean, I probably of, have seen it. What kind of Mormon it, porn do you watch? Right. Oh what, my what God. Oh, we're not going to get on that today. This is not my interview. I would, I would like this to know. This is your though. interview. I would like to know. <laughs> what, oh, yeah. What kind of porn Yeah, no. tell us what type of porn Some you watch, Yeah. Yeah. Somehow, cover her eyes. Somehow, somewhere, this is going to come up. <laughs> Yes, yes. I'm she glad you're here. Porn like this. I'm glad you're <laughs> here. Yes, put her on the spot. Tell them. Um, I usually watch threesomes. Okay. I usually watch also like probably Gang Bang. Okay. I just said it, whatever. But that I usually watch. Oh, there's there's no judgment here. No, Trust me. I, I'm good. <laughs> Well, hopefully I'm not gonna here. react. You got Actually, reaction. Actually, y'all, for me. I'm a really good girl. I don't oh, even watch boo, porn. Now. Boo, boo boo. She's like, I don't watch porn, but when I do, it's <laughs> when I do. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. That's that's reckless. We're off of what me about right you? now. Right. Thank you. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> I I definitely watch porn. Um, I like the I like the uh the two on one, two girls, one dude. I thought Wait. he was going to say two girls, one cup. I was like, this, nah. <laughs> hey, look, when somebody showed me that shit, my, my, the nigga we just talked about, my brother, he uh-huh. showed me that shit, and he didn't show me on some, oh, this is what it is. He's just like, watch this, you know? It's going to be That's wild. <laughs> I'm oh talking gosh. about the shit threw me. But, you know, I like watching um, um, interracial porn. You know okay. what I'm saying? I'm racist as hell, so I only like watching <laughs> black oh men have sex with any type of woman. I'm not going to lie. The, the, the Caucasian on Caucasian porn does nothing for me. I'm like... <sighs> Nah, and if if I'm feeling like real racist, it's the, it's okay. the black one way. I mean, he asked me, so I'm being honest, man. No, but you know, it's nothing real too wild. I do like lesbian porn, though. I do like watching girls go at it. I love, I, I, I love it. Me. I love it. Like tripping, like I would pay to watch two women do that. Just let me sit back and let me watch that. Like, I, I know two women. I was going to say that to can probably that. be arranged. I, I, <laughs> I'm so glad he's here. We're Look, back for Exotica soon, so you know. I might have to pull up. I might have to pull up because I would pay to. I just. I don't even need to interact. Like I just need to see this shit in person. Like, like y'all really into this shit? Like this shit really going crazy? Yeah, like just this. roll it out, sit back, relax, have a good show. God. There you go. God. That's exactly what it'd be. So we're gonna get kind of back to the show for a second, though. So after we did the pornioki, which, like I said, I call my best friend immediately. So we're doing a <laughs> pornioki at Friendsgiving. <laughs> Friends <laughs> That's what we're gonna do. That's a new activity. Um, but then you guys proceeded to display a film on big screen. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like I said, I wasn't really prepared. I could have it wasn't shocking, of course, you know, but I was like, okay, this is going on. There it's a all right, it's happening right now. And then, you know, maybe about like 10 minutes into it, you know, because like I said, I set off to the side. I looked around at everyone and I was like, 
yo, we're all watching this porno, and, like, yeah. in, like in this room together, <laughs> like she, all of us. Yeah, when she told me that, she was like, that's what I said, like, after 20 minutes, like, the whole first 20 minutes that I've been there, I've been like, all right, this is about to go off, right? It's about to go off at the 20-minute mark. I, I was just locked in. In that scene, I'm eating pussy for like 20 minutes. Right. The whole Yo, 20, was, whole yeah. first 20 minutes? I was minutes? going in. You the was just crowd, down there. the girl, the one chick in the crowd <laughs> Yo, was she like, was, I'm done. She's like, <laughs> where the D at? Oh, she just wanted, she just wanted <laughs> to It's do funny because it's like, you know, we, we shoot a lot of things where we try to show, like that one, that was our first like full length film. Right. Okay. And it was only one scene. It was we was just like, we just going to extend everything. Cause a lot of a lot of porn is is they rush through. Yeah, it's like twenty two minutes. Yeah, they it's it's kind of like how, you know, songs they try to keep a single to three minutes and thirty seconds. Yeah, right, right. right. And and to me, like, I have a motto where it's like, if you if you fuck twice the same way, you're doing it wrong. Okay. You should always be trying something different. Can you say that again no. for the people in the back that didn't hear? <laughs> oh. <laughs> if you fuck twice <laughs> the same way, you're doing it wrong. I probably. Said that backwards, but Message. either way. <laughs> Thank but, you. but like, so we were just saying, you know, the the people who were asking us to make a film, they were just like, yo, how come there's no passion amongst black folk in porn? Or, you know, just in porn in general, you'll see a lot of films where it's just a dude getting his dick sucked. But how many films do you see where a woman is really getting her pussy ate to climax right, 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 by right. a dude? Right. You have to go to lesbian porn to R- see something right, like that. Right, 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 right. So we were just trying to, we were just like, yo, let's do some shit and really flip it. So and I was that was our first John, and we actually won an award at FECCOM for that. So, and the scenes- Can we get a hand clap? Dumb long. <laughs> like, it's over an hour of just me and her. So like, <laughs> it was just really interesting to see people, because some people were like, you could tell that they was just, they was there for the whole ride. Other people, they were like, yo, I'm, I'm used to seeing like, Three licks and then he's sticking the dick in. You know right. what I'm saying? So it was it was really interesting to see how everybody was reacting to and, it. And now that you explain it, I was thinking like this was more sensual. This was more. This was more. Yes and no, because at some points, you know, I'm spitting on it. I'm banging well, it out. Like it's all over. It's all over the place. But you're I paying think attention that's another... to what you're doing. Spitting is what I'm saying. in mouth. I just want to say that. Oh yeah, we was getting it. <laughs> yeah, I was listening to the horrible decisions. The most recent one, and you said you like spit. And I love spit. We, we gonna get into that. I love spit. We gonna get into that, but. <laughs> I was I was thinking when you said you was down there for twenty minutes, like you had to really be into it. Ain't nobody just down there for twenty minutes. I love eating pussy personally. I'm, me too. Like yo, I will, I will raise my hand on that too. Definitely. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like talk just... about it. Talk brunch, brunch I, as I, well. I, <laughs> brunch as well. snacks, all that shit. I think, oh, right. I think it's one of those things where, in porn in general, like the kind of porn I watch. Right. Wait, I we like... never asked you your favorite. Yeah, put them on the spot. I, personally, like my favorite really is just. When I look at it and I know all the people there want to be there. Mm. You know, because there's porn I watch and I'm like, they ain't got no fucking chemistry. I know that they, right. they just was contracted to be there and they might both look good. Right. And there might be certain things they do that's all right. They just but like if they ago, not if they, they not here. Talk. And then um shit, what else? I'm all over the place with porn. But I really, I really like trans women and cis women together. What is a cis? Cis woman is a woman who was born a woman. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So like that that's my favorite shit to watch. I just think that that shit is like just sexy <laughs> as fuck to me. I don't like, know. It's like an extra an pair of breasts one. there. <laughs> that's different as hell. I would I wouldn't expect that. Yo, and different. then and then for me also, like I love lesbian porn because lesbian porn is also like usually the most romantic and passionate porn that you'll find. And I just I love it. I love watching women. I think that just women are just how women touch, how women move. And also just from the scenes, like women put themselves together. Like there's a lot of porn that I look at and I'm like, the reason that I present how I present is because I know that there are more than just men watching porn. Right. Right. So I think that one of the ways that we have tried to change things, like I like shoes. I look at women's shoes in in porn, right? So, you know, my brother, bless the dead, he used to say to me like, yo, when you watch porn, he was more into porn than me. And he was just like, yo, when you watch porn, chicks always got fly, fly f- footwear on. But dudes will be there in fucking socks. Yeah. <laughs> that shit is right. stupid as hell. Or they'll be there in some some whack joints. Oh, so is so that why you had the little... That's why I, okay. any shit you watch, I got some fly kicks on. Because yeah. I know that people I got, knew that was got sneaker fetishes <laughs> and foot fetishes. You some going crazy? Shit. 
I'll be ranging from phones. I see you got the bronze, the bronze on today. Whatever, I yeah, the bronze, the, so the you be on Jordans, whatever. Like I to fuck me, with that because also it's crazy because now I got people that's that sneakerheads that'll hit me up. That's wild, you know. As and hell. then that's hey, wild. Like, Women yeah, I know I, will I, be I like, I appreciate that. Or if I don't have my shoe shoes on, it doesn't. It goes shoes or barefoot, like no socks. Right. And you would you would think that that's a little thing. But a lot of sisters will reach out and say, yo, I like that shit. That, that shit is sexy. Something. Or if you got the Tims on, like, because they know you from Jersey. I was you got just going to say, on. I see hey. the joint where the nigga had his Tims on. It's like, this nigga came to do work. He exactly. Didn't come to like, do anything he else came in his work. construction boots right. Right. to put in that work. Ready. <laughs> but I mean, like, it to me, the overall presentation matters. Right. So, like, we that's how we try to approach things. So, like, that's why it's like when people are watching and they're watching the whole scene live, like, seeing what people respond to and react to is dope for me. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. So, do you want to say anything else about the actual show? Because I know, I remember I had raised my hand at some point and I was like, I really didn't know what to expect. Yeah. You know, because it was all secretive, secretive, secretive. We can't say nothing. I asked it and then I remember hitting you up like, hey, what can I expect? Is this going to be a film? Or, and you're like, yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So I was like, all right, you know, I'm I think that's a mind. I it. think that's a mind fuck on their part, though, to just get you curious, to even get you want to come out more, because you might have this preconceived notion of what you're about to go into, and then <laughs> you get there and they blow your mind. Well, I mean, we also did like a Q and A for people who are interested in learning more about the business, whether it be starting their own or just knowing how things go on oh, behind man. the scenes and all that too. I just kind of want to uh, speak to that for a second um, because I know, and obviously. No one would know who this, you know, individual was, so I felt, you know, comfortable to say it. But um, there was a young lady who raised her ha her hand, and she was like, you know, well, I'm HIV positive, but I want to be in the industry. Like, how do I go about doing that? And first of all, I thought it was super cool because you guys were not like, you know what I'm saying? There was no like, oh my god, like stigma type attached to it. You guys were like, well, you know, they kind of have a community for that, you know, da da da. -da. So it wasn't like to discourage her or make her feel embarrassed or anything like that. I thought that was kind of cool. But I mean, do you get questions like that a lot or because it was just kind of I was like we get, what we get questions across the board and I and I think it is important to kind of for people who don't know that there are people in the industry who have a pocket in the industry who disclose if they have if they have a STD or STI or, or are living with something and they can work with other people who do right and then for people who do not have you know we're tested rigorous rigorously Right, you know, like I'm. I've probably been tested last month more than most people are tested in the last five to ten years. Right, which I think is is very interesting too, because so many people they'll say, you know, you in the porn industry, so you know they have a, a particular perception about our health or our hygiene or whatever, right? Right. But most people, if you ask them, hey, when's the last time you got an AIDS test? Most people are like, they damn, I, tell you I can't. Even, yeah, right. So I was like, well, I know. I had one three times last month. Right. You know, so I, th I think that that's one thing that from being in the industry that I now expect, because like I meet somebody that's, you know, a civilian in the in the world or whatever. Damn, and I'm they like, call it a civilian. <laughs> they call it a civilian. You know, or some, okay. somebody, I, you know. <laughs> I feel it. I feel but, it. But All right. somebody who, who might holler me that's not in the industry or whatever. And, you know, I'm automatically like, well, can I see your results? And people will take that shit personally offensive yes and i'm like whoa like oh what you bugging out for shorty but you probably right. like what you bugging out for yeah, yeah. and it's and it's not a, even like a judgment thing it's just more like a it should be cool i'm just used to people being tested so that's a that's a business was, and a personal purpose thing yeah. i would assume and i think and i think it was really uh commendable on that sister's part to be to she was like yo i'm disclosing to everybody in right, here right right you know this this is this is my situation this is who i am right but i am interested in doing these things and right. how can i do that in a way that's safe for other people like i fuck with that i thought that took a lot of courage too cuz i was really? like shocked i was like what like you know you don't hear that every day and then just she, and she was kind of open and then i mean obviously who knows i couldn't look at everybody's faces but it wasn't there was no shift in the energy of the crowd, you know what I'm saying, after that comment. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of cool, too. I mean, I guess we all just watched an hour-long porn together, so... We lit. <laughs> we there lit. were certain we boundaries that had already been broken the through, sex club. so... Because <laughs> I ain't even gonna okay, hold no. you up. I came in when I came in and, and met you on, on the fly, and I'm like, I'm just sitting in the back waiting on you to come out, and I'm looking at the video like, 
All right, I already just seen my right, man I'm like, making well, it. I'm like, well, here's an idea <laughs> of what was going yet. on. Like, here, it's She's still like, rolling. Look. I'm like, all right. <laughs> it's rolling still. This is what I watched. <laughs> this is it. But no, I thought it was really cool. Like I said, I knew I had an idea, but I had no idea yeah. in the same breath. But I think it was a good time. I think it was interesting. I was like, dang, I wish I would have brought somebody. You know what I'm saying? Like, kind of be like, be there type of thing. But other than that, I was like, all right, cool. That's what's up. I love it. I love it. Questions. Can we get to the questions? Okay, let's get to the questions. I got a question off rip, and I'm going to go with two off rip. Okay. All right. I was listening to one of the other podcasts, and you said, niggas be sending you dick pics talking about, yo, am I good enough to get into the game? Like, that's a thing? Like a reoccurring thing? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> I'm like, he said straight face, unfortunately, yes. I'm like, I'm listening to you talk about it. I'm like, niggas can't be sending you dick pics talking about, bro, it's, put, can I get in the game? It's crazy because, I mean, obviously I do porn, so I be around other naked, like we've done, and, 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 I've and, done and of course, male, male, female scene, all this, but it's like, I don't ever want anybody to send me anything of their body if I ain't asked for that shit. Exactly. Right. And I think that it's it's made me really realize what women have to go through consistently mm. all the fucking time mm. that aren't even in porn that might just be a regular a chick. fucking librarian. Right. And they meet a dude and that dude just jump into their Hey, nice to meet you. Here's my dick. Like, yo, what the fuck? Like, people need <laughs> to stop that What is that about? That shit. Like, what? I need somebody. We're going to pause real quick. Listeners, what is that about? If Can y'all answer that question for me? Because I, I've never received a dick pic like, damn, that's a good, like, that's a good dick. Like, I don't know. What is that? That tells me nothing. First of all, you don't have, you have to have a reference. If you're going to send a dick pic with no reference, who knows? You know what I'm saying? But I don't even like it. What's up, everybody? It's Jazzy. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Jazzy World Podcast. It means so much to me. Uh, go ahead and check me out on Instagram at Jazzy's X World. Uh, pretty much all social media, even though I don't do Twitter. Maybe if y'all push me to, I will. Uh, probably not, though. But like, comment, share the podcast. Let me know your thoughts. I'm always up for suggestions, things like that. Uh, and maybe you'll be on the next episode who knows stay tuned uh i i got a question what you got in the bag oh okay bunch of instruments instruments so i have uh some floggers some paddles all right so it, that all goes with impact play right yeah. I, I, what I the feel fuck like is floggers is your main thing like I, that's what i've heard you talk about the most and then you had some at the event that you did last night yeah. so for the listeners that do not know what are floggers what are what's impact play period okay so can you get it we're on camera can you just like get it out is that too much She's like pull it out i mean Wait, you on. know let's get a little go description ahead, go ahead. <laughs> just, just. Because, look, I'm Real listening to like. the joint. They say impact play. I'm like, bro, that sound like football. That sound like <laughs> shoulder pads and helmets finna get the cracking okay, in this bitch. Like I'm like, whoa. And then, you know, they talking about the whips and shit. I'm like, bro, you finna have me on some different shit in my, in my later 30s. But, <laughs> you know, I'm about to turn up. <laughs> Real super quick. I just want to give a shout out for whatever it means. To... This is Flogger. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. To the uh, <laughs> or, don't you just hold it? To the uh, <laughs> I, yeah, you just hold weapon like just hold this leather joint. Look, I'm already don't know. Stop! Don't you talk right, no more. You, <laughs> don't. You better watch out. But I want to give a quick shout out to Horrible Decisions because you know that was one of the first first uh, podcasts that I listened to. He was on. He was a part of it. And this is uh, low key. Horrible Decisions kind of made this happen. Kind of put in the, yeah, the motions. You know what I'm saying? To to get shout this interview. You know. So. <laughs> they, they had me on a couple times on that. If you've never listened to a Horrible Decisions podcast, I highly recommend it. Because they're funny as hell. They're super funny. They're super open and honest, like you were saying, which is really important. So, stop. <laughs> <laughs> so, very important thing. The thing that I think that where BDSM helps everybody is because it's a consensual thing. You don't just run up on nobody, catch them with a whip or a paddle with some blockers, right? Right, right. So, you have what's called a dragon tail. It's a whip. Kind of, you'll feel it the same way if you've ever been snapped with a towel. Yeah. that's So that kind of feel, it's a sting to it. Ooh. And what you have is a folded leather paddle. So. Ban it real quick. I can't with the drink, but. It's, it's, <laughs> it's more of a, a been, wide, trusting it. more of a <laughs> wide feeling. Poor that slap. one is more, that this one's one. more concentrated. That's well, you can kind of look at it and yeah. see that this is going to hit, you know, something. Less that one's than loud this. as fuck too. Yeah. So it's got a little. Got a little sound to it when you get into it. Stop it. And so these <laughs> these are f what they call uh, swivel or nunchuck floggers here. Ooh. Okay. So because of the mech 
making it like right here. Yeah. Okay, so it just turned. Skin intense, y'all. So I don't know. <laughs> These also can give you kind of like both feelings in a way, depending on where I hit you with them. So if I catch you with them more down here, it is going to be more of a sting. And I catch you a little deep on here, it's going to be more of a thud. I usually tell people, right. it's kind of like if you like being spanked, you think about the difference between the different sections of your hand. If I catch you with the edges of my fingers, it's going right. to have a sting to it. Right. If I catch you with the middle, it's going to have a cup. So yeah. it's going to have like a little, almost like a little suction, a little more air to it. Right. And I catch you with here, that's more thud. So, right. and if you hit somebody that's hard enough, strength, that's right. that's some good bruises right there. Right. right. So, each one is kind of like that in a different way. I love floggers just because I don't know. Like I said, I used to do martial arts and stuff. So the right. first time I ever saw somebody doing the shit with him, I was like, "Yo, this should look like fucking nunchucks." So you I took wanna, the martial arts shit to the sex like, shit. Like I was like, yes. I could probably swing them shits in your <laughs> way, right? So, but also like watching people and how good it makes them feel. Like, have you ever been to a massage and somebody hits you with one of these joints? Hell yeah. Right. You know how that shit is? It's like relaxing, but think of that. That's what impact play is anything where there is an impact to your body. Okay. Right. So paddling, whipping, spanking, you know, um, caning, you know, all kinds of different instruments. Caning? Yeah, some people like to get hit with canes. Everything from, you know, just a that small little like bamboo. Abuse, my dude. It's not abuse if someone consents to it. And if you know what you're doing in a safe <laughs> right. way. It is abuse if somebody just runs up on you and hits with you with a cane, cane right, for sure. Right. But there's there's ways for all of this to work in a safe way. And so sexual like, way at, the, at this absolutely. point. Absolutely. But I mean, like, so like, for example, with, with that, you wouldn't just run up to somebody and hit them in the eye with that shit. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? Or I wouldn't just run up to somebody and hit them, you know, like in their kidneys or or in a, in a vital organ because, you know, could really cause some kind of damage. And see, that's the thing about the about the the objects or items in in the sexual universe that that get me. Like I'm thinking, like, okay, you want to be slapped on the ass with this. You want to be touched on your breasts with this. Like, no, people be want to be touched in areas that aren't considered sexual. You know what I'm saying? They just want to be. What is that it called? Depends. Is that a fetish? That is a fetish. So if you don't, can I get the air horns, please? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so it's like. When you're uh, basically the definition for those that weren't there, I'm glad you learned exactly. something last night. That's what it is. Oh, so she's like, educated. A I'm... fetish. A fetish is anything that turns you on. Uh, that's not directly correlated to procreation. Okay. So there are people who just really like all kinds of impact, or or you know, they're uh, masochists. You know, they like to feel pain. They like to feel pain in different kind of ways. That's correct. And that pain can range from the physical. To emotional, mental, oh psychological God. domination, you know, a financial for like fin doms out there. You know, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 talk about that fin doms. Wait, wait. Fin dom is financial domination. There, How? there are some people, you know, out what there dance, like to, I know this, I know about, sorry, I mean, I didn't think mean about Dan out, but think about dancers. You know, when you go to a strip club, there are a lot of strippers who make a lot of money that can't dance at all, right. But they can carry an amazing conversation. And that's how you get my bread. And there are a lot of dudes who are looking for conversation. conversation. Or they want to be told what to do with their money. Damn. You, that's, and, and I mean, yes. this goes across the board. And, you know, that's just a different level of how people like to be dominated. Some people are emotionally attached to their money. So being told what to do with it will make you feel a certain kind of way. It will make you turned on to take something that maybe for you... Maybe for you, a couple hundred dollars ain't shit. Like, right. you could just let it go. But somebody telling you, nah, this is how you're going to use it. This is how you're not going to use it. Ooh. They like Sounds that like shit. a fucking girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say thank y'all again so much for watching, but it is a wrap. Be sure to tune into the full episode. It can be found on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Play at Session Conversations. Scroll down to Jazzy's Escrow podcast, but also check out the other podcasts on the channel. Um, I love y'all, but I'm out at this time. Uh, but if you can't get enough, follow me on all things social media, Jazzy's Escrow. Mwah.